what are you doing to help yeah. yourself let's start basic mm. what podcast are you listening to what books are you reading mm. they're free things to do yeah on top of that there's what workshops seminars are you paying for mm. on top of that what therapy are you going to mm. are you signing with a coach or a mentor mm. what are you doing to get yourself out of this thing that is apparently destroying your life mm. even as basic as what what free steps are you taking yeah, no, like, no, no, are, no, no. are you going outside and get some fresh air and yeah. just trying to not what food sit you in eating your... yeah exactly and, and no... welcome to the prime life project podcast a place to help you unlock your full potential both mentally and physically to become the best version of you Welcome back to an episode of the Prime Life Project Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel James, and I'm joined once again by Katie, my girlfriend. Her name's Katie Keeper Bright. We're going to give her a full name, not just Katie, my girlfriend. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> just I have an identity. Title. Um, how are we? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. And yourself? I'm very well, thank you very much. Um, for those of you who don't know the format of this show, what used to happen was Katie used to write me and Mikey questions behind the scenes, and then me and Mikey would go off Katie's questions and ask him each other back and forth however with some of the episodes that me and katie did together the feedback was really really good so we're just bringing we've given katie an upgrade she's uh, now coming into the forefront uh she played dressed in press today done a hair for us so i'm I feel very privileged am, and I, am i in my probation period in your probation period so you can me and Mike are gonna have a review at the end of this episode this will be the second one we've done and then we're gonna have a, a, a serious review about the standards um, so um what we're we talking about today uh so today how funny, given what you said. Talking about kind of supporting other people. Mm -hmm. um, What's your leadership style? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not talking about it from that perspective. So I guess where I'm coming from with this is that lots of people reach out to you, um, whether that be kind of clients, ex-clients, so more the professional side of things or kind of, I guess, friends or relatives and stuff like that. So, um, so you are experienced in talking about kind of helping others. Um, so today I want to talk about it mainly from like a probably like a friend a perspective as opposed to talking about like professional clients. So I'll get a professional zone because <laughs> that's probably going to be more helpful okay, yeah, for yeah, other yeah. people, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um. So I guess my first question is: How do you approach a situation where somebody comes to you and they're struggling? Mm -hmm. What do you do, and how do you help them? Uh, is this old Daniel or new Daniel? This is. No. Current Daniel. Current Daniel. Uh, current Daniel gets a bit more information. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of the time, again, and we're not talking about me from professional capacity, but a lot of the time when people see what I do, they just assume I'm going to help them, which is all well and good, but people have got to be ready to be helped. So this is, again, from friends' perspective. So we're talking about friends now. So people, so you said, what am I doing? But this is less of people. People, when they reach out initially can be in a place of desperation and they just want someone to talk to. So a really good thing to do, and I think we learned this from Paul Cope, like all three of us on the Paul Cope thing, it's just basically asking the question, do you want me to listen or do you want my advice? So if someone comes to me now and they're struggling as a friend, one of the first things I'll do is, do you want me to listen to your problem or are you wanting my advice? And there's a very difference between my advice and me coaching someone, which completely different Daniel comes to the, to the, to the forefront here. So that's the first thing that I do now. And most of the time, they kind of just want me to listen. And then they realize they don't want me to listen. They want my <laughs> advice. And then again, it depends on where I'm at now. Because again, I've had to set that professional boundary. Because at the end of the day, it, like, it's my job. And it's just like, you don't just go to a, a, someone, a restaurant and cooks food and be like, oh, can you just cook me some food for free? It just, it just doesn't work that way. And I've had to reset that boundary. Now, again, good friends of mine, it's different. People have been in my life for a while, different. But I've really had to set that boundary because there's been a lot of people that I've given really good solid advice to that is worth a lot of money and they have not listened and do that once and you're my friend okay do it twice it's not gonna happen the third time so I've just got to the stage now where you've the people are asking for the advice I'm kind of also vetoing and checking if they're ready to actually change or if they just want to vent they're angry whatever it is because I've learned the difference now between friends of mine that come to me and genuinely want to change there or at a complete loss and are desperate versus those that are just feeling a certain way and just want to have a moan. And I'm not there to moan. I'm not, that's not me. Go speak to other friends. Mm. I don't want to waste my time with it. I don't enjoy drama or anything like that. And it's, again, this was said old Daniel versus new Daniel because this is something I've really struggled with mm. because straight away, I'm like, right, let's go for coffee. Let me, let me help you. Mm. And then it, save you. And then it bite me in the ass so many times. So I think a lot of people can relate to that. From, even though they're not a coach, 
their first thing is, right, well, let's sort this problem out. Mm. And then they waste so much time, energy and effort on the situation only to have the person not do anything because they weren't actually ready to change in the first place and they had no intention of actually changing. I think a lot of times people just want somebody to A, vent to and B, kind of validate their feelings. You see it all the time in relationships, don't you? You have those friends that they've fallen out with their partner or they've done the partner's done something that's annoyed them. So like, oh, this person is blah, 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 blah. They never come to you with the positives or mm-hmm. the good experience. You never hear about that. They're just probably pretty pissed off and want to vent. And yet, but it's framed in a way that they need help. Yeah. And I think we covered that, didn't we, on the relationship episode? Yeah. Like, just don't do that. <laughs> just don't yeah. do that with your friends because it's not a good place to be to, mm. to, to do that. But you're right there. It's like, I really need your help. Mm. Well, do, do you or do you just want to talk? Mm. It's also, so again, it's knowing who's coming and actually talking to you as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're completely right. I mean, people make, make things like, um, again, man to have a mole and it's not really a thing. Mm. So yeah, 100% in, in the relationship side of things as well. Because it's a big thing. Like we have a bit of an argument or a Barney. Everyone on that person. And again, it's hard because, especially from a friend's perspective, if you know friends are in a bad relationship, and again, you're not a coach, you don't understand how the mind works, you can get really frustrated and annoyed with that. So in that situation, it's then being that compassionate friend mm. without getting emotionally invested in it. Because I think a lot of the time you can get emotionally invested in wanting to help this person. Yeah. And that's what causes the issue. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're very aware, you know this person's not going to leave, they're not ready to leave yet. You can still yeah. be there to give advice and help, mm-hmm. but you're not emotionally invested on the outcome of what's going on. Yeah. What's your thoughts? No, I, <laughs> I agree. I've yeah. been told I have to make sure I ask Katie questions. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, I, th- I think we've all been there. We mm. all have friends that are there's gonna be all our friends not do we <laughs> you kind <laughs> okay. of pause that mike because i think at me saying we're all mikey friends, and i you. were friends <laughs> um no i think everyone has got that friend that you know vocalizes how unhappy they are in their relationship and how they don't want to or be just there. life or life or in their job you know mm-hmm. interchange relationship with job job or whatever else it may be but fundamentally they don't want to change it mm-hmm. they are not prepared to do anything they are not in that headspace to change it and I think that's where I've struggled in the past is that people come to me time and time again saying the same thing on cycle. And I'm, I'm just not prepared to entertain it anymore because I have nothing new to say. Mm-hmm. And I have friends that I then say that back to them. And I just said, I have nothing else to say to you. Mm. And I'm not prepared to entertain that subject anymore. Mm. Who's really doing that off? Well, <laughs> so you, 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 this seemed like a really good idea you came on this podcast, didn't it? Until you realised that you're face to face with me on the other end of the table. Well... <laughs> Anyway, yeah, that's a on. really good idea. <laughs> yeah, great idea. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, no you're right. It, it's um, it's that, that same thing again where you're just repeating yourself time and time again, but it's that emotional investment behind it. Um, and again, if it's a really good friend of yours that you, you've been with like as a friend for 15 odd yeah. years, then it's different versus someone that's just come in your life. Because this is the problem. If- I don't know if it is though, because I have friends that have been in my life that long and they've been in relationships or jobs. Mm-hmm. There's two people that I can think of. And they are still saying the same thing to me 15 mm. years later. But again, you don't get emotionally involved in it. So no. I'm saying. But, but again, and I think that's what but, you have to do is say. Because if you look at the bank, mm. the deposits versus the, the taking out, they've got enough deposits in that bank that actually you still want them in, in your life. They're still friends, but just you don't want to entertain the BS. Yeah. So you just don't emotionally get involved in it. Whereas if someone's just come in your life for the first year and they're just doing the same thing, you're just like, oh, do you know what? Yeah. Like, what the hell? No, I've gone. And that's the thing. They've not made the deposits yet. So what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's different. It's situational. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing. It's for me it's, I, I hate drama i hate all this sort of stuff but there's some genuine people in my life that have been in my life for a decent amount of time that when they struggle i won't make an effort to listen but i just don't get emotionally involved in it now until they're literally the stage again a friend we went for there's no chance to listen to this podcast so i'm not be that bothered <laughs> friend, <laughs> friend, friend, friend went for so it was a friend of mine originally um and I, I hope she does listen but she won't um friend of mine uh, that, 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 that i've known for years and um i've given her some solid advice solid advice that would have cost a good amount of money but i deliver it like I did on this podcast this is who i am like i'm not here to be fluffy duffy i'm here to deliver you the truth it's there the truth may harm you but it's never gonna hurt you so it may hurt you but it's never gonna harm you okay so it's like here's the truth there it is and essentially she didn't listen to me everything i said happened and then she then came to you rather than to me because you're gonna get the same advice because obviously you've got it from me and you've got your own experiences but it's essentially the same message be deliver it softer yeah. so then we went out for dinner all three of us and then it transpires that a situation that i helped her with she got back in that situation and she was looking at me and she's like i can see i can see that you're angry 
And I wasn't. I just went, no. Just like, never back to see him. Like, genuinely, I don't care. I, I, I was like, it's your life. I'm really happy for you. And I did I not say that? You did and I was, say and that. I, and I was not in any way no. being fake. You can. Say, I was literally. And he just said in the car, he's like, what's your thoughts on it? I went, exactly like, what I just said to you. Mm. He's like, what's your real thoughts? He's like, what I just said. So it's, there, was, there was no, I was like, I was so at peace with it to be like, it's your life. Yeah. Like, what, what, what do you want me to say? Are, are you now opening up this conversation for me to then tell you all the stuff I already told you previously? Because I'm, I'm multiplication because I'm not going to do that. Yeah. You're a fully grown adult. Cool, I'm happy for you. I just carried on eating my steak. No, it wasn't steak, was it? Whatever I had fish and chips. And then that was it. Do you know what I mean? We carried on the conversation. But she was like, I, I could see the look in your face. No, you, you can't. I think it was the absence of a reaction. Yeah. And that was, that was the interesting part of it. So again, mm. it's like, that's a real life example to that. Which probably says more about that person. Yeah. The fact that they're expecting a negative mm. reaction. Mm. But the and when they don't get one. The thing is, I absolutely love that person. I love that person's death. The amazing human being. But I'm not going to entertain it. Mm. I'm, come to me when you are genuinely a place where you want to hear some information. Until then, nope. And if you've got a friend that you can see is struggling, mm -hmm. would you ever approach them and try and help them? Yes. Depends how much. Give me more context. Give me an example. Because again, there's different levels of struggling, isn't there? So I'm not just going to barge in and stop. Oh, so it's like you're struggling. They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Uh, but if someone I can, like, like everything, it, yeah. it, it's very clear that they are yeah, struggling. Yeah, that's struggling. what I mean. Um, so again, prime example of someone that we all know uh, that I'm working with now, met on Mikey's farm, um, literally having a conversation with them. And it was very, very evident from the conversation I was having with that person, they were not okay. They gave me no indication that they were not okay in the sense of the words they were saying, but everything about that person, I'm quite good at picking up people's energy. I don't know where that's come from. That's from the last year. I've really developed people picking up people's energy. Bizarre. Anyway, another podcast. Um, and then after that, I just then sent a message. Just been like, really great talking to you. None of my business, but I noticed this. Left it there. And then when I got a massive three paragraph message back, I was like, oh, okay. And then open up the dialogue. So for me, if you're seeing that someone's struggling, first of all, are they actually struggling? Like if, if you have got no, you just think, oh, they look a bit sad. Like, just be careful how you approach it because imagine if you're just having a bad day and someone's like, oh, see, you're really struggling. It's like, yeah, do you mean, it's like your life's it's like, whoa, like I'm just a bit tired. But if you know that someone genuinely is struggling, like your partner's turned around and said like, oh, like, do you know the thing about really struggling? So you know, I just reach out to them. So I've done it before where someone that you've noticed on social media, that neither of us know, but someone's based in Nottingham, just an influencer kind of person, they were struggling, I reached out to them. I didn't hear anything back, but I was like, listen, if you just ever want to talk, like, that's how I would go about it. So you're not trying to go in there and be like, I've got the answers for you, because I don't have the answers for anyone. And it's constantly I have with my clients all the time. I don't have the answers. They have the answers. I just help them unlock the answers they've already got. I give them the key. I put it on the table. They've got to take the key and unlock it themselves. So they've already got the answers. So I'm not there trying to be like, oh, let me help you. Let me save you. My response to that situation, if I know someone's struggling, is I'll just put a burnout message out. Hey, how are you getting on? Do you fancy a coffee sometime? So then you're not even saying, oh, hey, I know you're struggling. It's just a, hey, do you want to go for a coffee? And then I'll be like, oh, it's not a good time right now. I'm really struggling. And then he can go into the dialogue. Or they're like, yeah, that'd be great. And then you have a conversation in person, whatever it is. But my advice is if someone that you know is struggling, don't reach out unless you actually genuinely want to help. Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing worse than if someone is struggling and if someone kind of reaches out, but they just want to be gossip, they don't actually care. So if you are wanting to meet this person to find out if they're okay, mm -hmm. be prepared to then actually help that person in whatever capacity that is, be prepared to sit there and listen to whatever it is for two hours. Mm. If you're not prepared to do that, don't reach out. And don't just do it you want the gossip on X, Y, and Z. Exactly. So make sure your intentions are pure. And you can go about it and your intentions are completely impure, but karma will get you. Like, I'm telling you that right now for a fact. If you're going in with bad intentions, I can categorically promise you, if you believe me or not, like you'll get what, karma will come back and get you. So make sure your intentions are good. But my, my first thing is like, if you know someone is struggling, like, make sure they are actually struggling and then just have a real gentle reach out. Don't go in there for the kill and just be like, I can see you're struggling. I, I, this person I reached out to, like I, I could really sense that I was on something because I was a bit more, hey, I kind of noticed this. Whereas previously, if I didn't know, I mean, if I didn't pick up that thing, I wouldn't have gone and in I there. I think that's different because for you, because of what you do for a job, exactly. that's not what most people do. How do you go about it? How would I go about it? It depends really because I have a really small, close group of friends that I know really well. All in this room. <laughs> this is not supposed to turn into some kind of comedy podcast. I know it's not, I'm joking. Um, so I was expecting I, you to say that to me, by the way. Like, so anyway. No. 
So I know them well enough mm. to be more direct. Yep. Um, but I think to your point, if it's somebody that I work with, so know pretty well, um, but I'm not that close to, mm. um, I, I'm just as, I'm a very direct and blunt person mm. and people expect that from me. So if they know me, they know that I am not softly, softly. And I guess it depends on personal style. Mm -hmm. So I probably would just be as open and say, hey, I've noticed this or that. Um, I'm here if you want a coffee or mm. if you want to, I'm the queen of offering to go and walk and talks with people. Mm. Um, so we just kind of offer that out there like an olive branch. Mm. And if people want to take it up, they'll take it up. Or nine times out of 10, what happens is people then circle back. So when they are at a place to have a conversation or explore how they're feeling or, or want to talk, mm -hmm. Because you've got to remember, some people just don't want to talk. Mm. Don't, yeah, don't. You really, two things popped in my head there. First thing is, don't take it personally. Yeah. If people, if they, it's if probably you, more of a reflection on them than they, it is yeah, on you. If they see that Instagram message and it's on scene, cool. Do you know, you've reached out as long as your intentions are good. As long as your intentions are good, don't worry about how they've taken it. As long as your intentions are good, that's the best thing. And the second thing that popped in my head when we talk about the corporate stuff is if you're out with a group of friends yeah. and you notice a friend being a bit distant, go and start talking to them. Mm. So if you notice they're not quite being themselves. But even though, that, again, especially for, like, the culture of drinking and stuff, I uh, you know that friend is just not quite themselves. Just go and talk to them. Yeah. Just make a conscious effort, but not like, oh, I've noticed you're not your normal shape self. But just go make a conscious effort. Yeah, say how are you? Yeah, and if they are to weird, then you can say, oh, is everything all right? Mm -hmm. So just mean like be that person that kind of just approaches that subject and goes from there. Does that make sense? Because again, when it comes to again, we're talking about struggling here. Like we're not talking about someone that's really, really struggling. But again, you never know. So if anyone hasn't seen that Norwich City football advert, go and see that. Like, if you've not seen it, just go and type in Norwich City men's mental health uh, advert. Like, just go and watch it, pause this podcast, come back, because it, again, have some tissues. Because that kind of summarizes mental health. Not just men's mental health, it's mental health in general. So it's just that being aware of if people's actions are suddenly changing, or the person that always comes out now suddenly isn't coming out. Again, it's just reaching out, just being like, oh, hey, is everything all right? Again, on, whatever it is. Just, so even every now and again, there's a few people I always reach out to. There's three people specifically that I know will not reach out if they're struggling. And if I've not heard from them for two to three months, I will always reach out. And they always say the same thing. It's as if you're reading my mind. And it's not. I just know their patterns. And it's the same three people every time. It's like, it's like you're reading my mind. But again, just checking in. So same thing. I then literally just check in, maybe two or three messages, and then we crack on. But it's just me saying, listen, I'm here with when you're ready i'm here but i'm not going out of my way to be like tell me everything tell me why you're struggling yeah, and i think that's really powerful just because sometimes i think if you if you are struggling or you know there are things that you've got on your plate that you are finding difficult is that sometimes you can feel like the world is against you when it's not you just can't see the wood from the trees and just knowing that somebody is there and is always happy to talk i think goes a long way for people yeah and if you've got a friend as well where you haven't spoken to for a while just drop a message mm -hmm. say hey do you think of you hope you're okay did you do that? That is one of the most powerful things you can do. So, there's a friend of yours right now that is in this podcast. There's a friend of yours you haven't spoken to for a while. Just drop a message. Yeah. Hey, do you think of you? How are you getting on? Yeah. Cool. Because you don't know. Yeah. You have not got, you're assuming they don't want to talk to you because they're too busy or X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. They might actually be struggling. And even if they're not struggling, that is such nice like a yeah. like nice act of kindness, isn't 100%. it? 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, those ones add on to that I kind of interrupted, but someone popped no, in my head when we were talking no. about what you do. I think the follow on from that for me then is you know, somebody opens up to you and they want, you know, you've had that conversation about whether they want you want, they want you to just listen or provide advice. How do you then balance kind of validating their struggles and how they're feeling whilst, I guess, installing positivity and trying to get them out of where they are, but also making sure that they are not in that, what I would call that victim mindset whole because I think the the balance of all of those things when somebody is struggling can be really difficult yep. and how would you I guess what advice would you give to people that was helping someone and they don't you know they, they need to balance all of that uh really got to gauge where the person's at because it's all about timing yeah. because the most powerful impactful profound message ever delivered at the wrong time will not land so if that person right now let's say it's that person that's broken up from the boyfriend mm -hmm. that you've said for 10 years, they need to break up, they're no good for you, blah, 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 and they're there, it's finally happened. That is not the time to be like, I told you so, see, blah, 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 because although you may be correct, not the right time. Mm -hmm. So depending on where they're at, let's say something has happened and it's kind of settled down a bit and they are then at that struggling stage, mm -hmm. but they're not broken. I'm not just using relationship as an example, it's not raw. So let's say they've been struggling with their mental health and they're not in that dark pit, they're kind of just coming out. You could, the more out they are, 
more honest you can be because they need honesty yeah i don't think it's honesty i think that the filter changes yeah the filter changes yeah exactly mm. yeah, the filter changes but again at the start if people are in that rock bottom place or just, that, that, that raw state of they've just broken the partner they don't want to hear anything they don't want to hear honesty they don't want to hear the truth they don't they want to be they want to have their feelings validated mm. so that's when you're then validating them and if they want to be the victim let them be the victim because that at that stage is the right thing. Because there's nothing you can say to get them out of that. Nothing. Because the way you get someone out of victim mindset is to have a real honest, honest conversation with them. But you can't do that when they're in that delicate space. So you've got to have an honest conversation with what's in front of you. Is that person quite vulnerable and delicate? If the answer is yes, maybe just it, steer a lot more on the side of validating where they're at, letting them know it's okay to feel that way. And also um, letting them stay in that victim mindset if they think the world's against them, because that's okay. But then slowly and steadily, for a matter of days, weeks, depending on where they're at, you then start to deliver them the mirror of truth and get them to take that responsibility for whatever it is, because there's always a bit of responsibility, the life lesson, whatever it is, and you start to actually give them more of the harsh truths. The yes of validating their feelings and what you felt was valid, yes. But this victim mindset you've got yourself in, that's not empowering you. This is actually really causing you some issues here. How can we kind of reframe this? What positives can we see from this, et cetera, et cetera? What can we take from this situation? And you start to rebuild that person back up again. But it's a very fine, delicate balance because again, the right message landed at the wrong time will fall on deaf ears. So this where again, I've been doing this for a long time throughout my entire coaching career. So I've got used to that sort of dance with doing that. But if you're new to it, I'd always err on the side of caution. You'll know when that, when you get sick of this person's BS <laughs> and it's like they're sick of their own BS, yeah. that's when you know it's time to switch change it up. Hmm. But if it's just an initial really raw thing, even though you know you're right, and you just want to scream to them, I told you so. Like, you know this is the right for you. You know he's this, you know they're that, you know you're better off without that job, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. And literally, that's not going to help. It's going to make them feel worse. So let them cry, vent, let them get in victim mode. Just understand at some point, if you're a good friend or this guide in the situation, you've been chosen to be this guide in this person's journey, you're going to have to hit them with the truth. But just make sure you deliver it in a nice, soft way. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? No, I completely agree. I think in the past, I have been guilty of going in like too harsh, too early. Um, but I guess that's probably a reflection on me, not on them or the situation. Um, because I have in the past then found it really difficult not to take people's pain on myself. Mm -hmm. And that's something we'll touch on in a minute because I think there's that whole, you know, you can flip between supporting people, but not wanting to, and, and wanting to help them, but not wanting to help them, I guess, at the detriment of yourself. And that can be quite difficult at times. Yep. So as a follow on, how, how can you support other people without taking on that pain or whilst their I guess their struggles consuming you as a person work on yourself so the easiest way to help someone is to help yourself it's a great saying that you can't pour from an empty cup so for me it's looking at it and saying right well, where's your cup at right now especially if it's a good friend that's in this place you should be able to say to them I really want to help you but right now I'm struggling myself I'm not in a place to give you that I can listen I'm not in a place to, to be giving you any sort of advice. And you may not even be in a place to listen. You may not be able to take that on. Because again, it depends how good you are. Again, because I'm very emp em empathetic. I can take on people's stuff. So again, when I'm meeting people, I like to kind of know what I'm getting. So if anyone listened to the Dave Norton podcast, when I first met Dave, he just said, hey, Dan, can we go for a walk? I had no idea what he was going to drop on me. If you've not listened to that podcast, go listen to it. But when he dropped that on me, I came back and I was a bit broken because I had not mentally prepared myself for that level of conversation and it it like hit me hard. Mm. So it's understanding that you've got to put on what I call it your suit of armor first and you can only do that through the self-awareness. So again, if you're one of these people that's taking all the, 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 your friends' dramas and stuff on, first of all, ask yourself, well, why? Why are you that person? First of all, ask yourself, why are you that person? Do you love it? Do you secretly love it? Because you complain about it. Oh, everyone comes to me. Do you secretly love it is the first thing? Because there's a reason why you keep And do you think that's it. healthy if people do? No. No one, no one unless you're a therapist, because even therapists and counsellors don't like it. They love helping people, but they don't really like taking on people because it's, it's hard. It's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to do. So my thing is just like, just you've got to set some boundaries. If you're not in a place to deal with it, set those boundaries. I'm really struggling right now. Actually, can we meet on Monday? rather than being like being that people pleaser and clearing your diary out to help this person when it's at the detriment of you. So my first thing is like, how do you help these people? Like help yourself first. 
and ask yourself, am I in a position right now to hear this information? Am I in a position right now to pour back? I'm not saying your cup's got to be completely full, but if you are running on empty and you are struggling and your mental health is through the floor, this is not going to help you. For some people it might, because that general act of helping yeah. fills their cup. But it depends what we're talking about. Yeah. If it's someone that's really struggling with their mental health, I would argue no. If it's someone that's broken up with their boyfriend, yeah, potentially that's going to that's going to help you because you're doing the right thing, you're doing the kind thing. And actually, if you're struggling to help yourself, helping others is a real good thing to help. Like get outside of yourself. But again, only you can judge that the situation, circumstances. But only you know if this thing. And the way to know that is if you're dreading going to help this person, and you the, t- the whole text message is draining your soul, and you know this isn't the right thing for you. You know deep down that you shouldn't be helping that person. Work on yourself whatever that works for you that, that, that self-love self-improvement and then help that person as and when you can or just say I really can't help you right now and just make it very clear I can't help you have you thought about speaking to X or Y another friend in that friendship group does that make sense that's, that's how I yeah, go about it I, I think that comes down to having real awareness of where yeah. you are at which, pers- is hard. which is hard which is where you're at personally because often if you are struggling you're not aware then I think that's when it can become dangerous yep. so to speak because i've seen it before where friend one is trying to is struggling friend two is trying to help friend one but it's also struggling and it just becomes kind of a concoction of and it's the blind leading the blind yeah, the thing. If, you, if you're struggling and you've got no awareness of how to sort yourself out the advice you're giving is not going to help the reason why i'm so good at helping people is because i've gone through and overcome so much stuff that the advice i can literally put myself in a position and resonate in some way shape or form where they're at i can meet them where they're at Whereas if you've got no clue of how to sort your life out, who are you to give advice to other people? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, and there's a difference between giving advice and being and there to listen. Yeah. So right now we're talking about giving advice. If you're just there to listen, that's a different ball game. Mm. But understand, like, don't try and be that savior because you might do more damage than good because what advice are you giving? Why can't you take your own advice? Yeah. And that's the thing, oh, I give it, I can't take it. Well, that's an issue. That's a red flag. If you're that person, that friendship, you know, friendship group that can always give advice but can't take it, why is that? Mm. And I have, like, I personally have had to withdraw myself from friendship groups, not withdraw myself from the friendship group, so to speak, but from that close, intimate setting, because I have noticed that people that I used to, I guess, associate with and hang out with more, they, I've gone on this journey to become more self-aware. I think some of them probably haven't been on that journey. And then those get together and those meetups and those breakfasts and whatever, then become like a a whinge fest. Mm -hmm. Everyone's struggling trying to help each other they're also struggling and then it just becomes like this broken concoction of mm-hmm. mess and and i think you see that a lot especially in females girls mm-hmm. that they think they're helping each other but it just becomes toxic yeah. what what are you doing to help yourself mm. what what again is in and you're right it, 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 mainly women it happens 100 percent, and that's okay to start off with but then if it's something major what are you doing to help yourself let's start basic what podcasts you listen to? What books you reading? They're free things to do. On top of that, there's what workshops, seminars are you paying for? On top of that, what therapy are you going to? Are you signing with a coach or a mentor? What are you doing to get yourself out of this thing that is apparently destroying your life? Mm. Even as basic as what what free steps are you taking? Yeah, like, are, are you going outside and get some fresh air and yeah. just trying to not? What food are you eating? Your, yeah, exactly. And there's no, it's just starting with that's stop with free stuff. But even then, just podcasts, just or YouTube, just typing in how do I get out of a funk, and there'll be a video there, a three minute video that you can watch, will give you some idea, which will tell you go outside. Have you tried this? Have you tried that? So if people say I don't know where to start. That's that's that, that's not an excuse nowadays. Like you've got more information. This blew my mind. I can't remember where the hell I heard it, but we've got more information now on our phones than every single king and emperor in history ever did. We've got more information on our phones right now than any other leader, emperor, king ever did. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mean to believe it's true. Yeah. yeah. Like, to me, everything's all there. And we're saying that we don't know what to do. We do know what to do. We just don't, we're not willing to take the action. And this comes back to, do you actually want to change? Because yeah. this is a whole different podcast yeah. in and of itself. Like, why are you staying in this toxic mm. thing? Not even less a relationship. Like, why are you staying in this toxicity? Mm. Why are you constantly trying to cause drama in your life? Why are you the source for drama? Because this is where it comes back to. And this, again, people won't listen to it, they won't like this, but it is what it is. If you go from relationship to relationship and that the person's toxic, you're the problem. If you're going from job to job to job and the boss is always the problem, newsflash, you're the problem. If everything and everyone else is always the problem, you are the problem. You are the common denominator and it is you that needs to change, not the world. The world will not change for you. The world is just giving you a perfect reflection of yourself. 
take the note because the universe will just keep sending you the same lesson over and over and over again. And it's bizarre because before we started this podcast, me and Michael were watching a video and the guy was talking about this. That's what I talk about all the time. The universe will keep sending you the same lesson, the same people, the same situations, the same thing, just in different clothes and in different situations, but it's the same thing until you learn the lesson. Mm -hmm. It's there for you. And you can either take it up or you don't. And then you'll keep getting the same thing. Again, <laughs> same thing over and over again. So yeah, that's that. Anything you want to throw on top of that? No. Have you have you ever gone to anyone and said that you can't support them? Yep. Uh, interesting enough, uh, with a client, um, were five years ago. So again, I've been doing this whole mindset stuff for point now six years, five six years. Uh, but again, it's in the fitness capacity. I spoke about this last night on a uh, live Q and A that I did. Was that? Um, all the principles I've been teaching everyone when it came to fat loss ones in that space were mindset principles. Yeah. I just applied them to fat loss. Yeah. It's the app book. And the people that actually did what I said would always come back to me and say, wow, this improved my marriage. Wow, this improved my friendships. Yeah. Wow, this improved my job. Wow, this improved every area of my life. And I'd be like, yes, because these are principles of life, of life and I've just applied them to fat loss. Yeah. If you do them, it will transcend fat loss and go through every area of your life. And there came one client that signed up with me and then recommended their friend. I was like, okay, their friend starts to talk to me. <clears throat> and on the consultation, I basically said, the consultation call, I said, I cannot work with you until you have therapy. Because mm -hmm. I know my limitations. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a therapist, I'm not a counselor. I'm a coach. I know my, my boundaries. And I basically said to this person, I cannot work with you, even in a fat loss perspective, until you're working with a therapist. Mm -hmm. So you have to go to a therapist for at least two months, prove to me that you've done it. Or you, you are still doing it and then I work with you alongside them so yes 100% because there's times and places I'm not a therapist I'm not a counsellor that's not my job and even if again someone tries to work with me now if I can't help them I won't pretend that I can because that doesn't serve anybody mm. that ruins my reputation and it doesn't help them get out of the hole that they're in mm. and again even when it comes to friends I've said it before when I was struggling uh, when was it? nearly last year that, that time last year two years ago two years ago I had to say to a lot of people, I'm not in place now to help you mm. because I was dealing with my own stuff and my clients took priority. Mm. So I then didn't have any excess stuff to then help external people. Mm. So yeah, 100%. And it's one of the most empowering things you can do, just set those boundaries. And I do it again now. 100% I do it again now. And again, we've said to you before, well, you've been struggling and I've said to you, can't talk about it tonight. We'll talk about it again tomorrow mm -hmm. because I'm not just going to start again, this is something major, major. But most time it's not it's something that can wait. It's like, I'm not in the headspace to deal with this right now. Uh, mentally I'm struggling or I'm, I'm in that place where I'm prickly we'll talk about this tomorrow we can do can, can just wait till tomorrow mm. yeah cool and that's you? a really good question you can ask people mm. if you're not in a position whether that be because you are struggling or like capacity wise mm -hmm. so I've had friends reach out before that you know I'm in the middle of a really busy day at work and you know they've reached out and the question I always ask to your point is is this a now or is this a can this wait till like this evening or tomorrow or the weekend or whatever that may be? And I think that can be a really powerful question to ask. It's also knowing the person as well because if it's the person where they don't want to trouble you, yeah, and, and they've reached out, and yeah. it's that person that never reaches out, yeah. and straight away, it, I, you know, if you ask that question, they'll be like, oh no, it's fine. When actually, for them to actually reach out is a red flag in and of itself. So yeah. then it's just like, no, okay, well, this person's reached out, this has got to be bad. Yes, I'm working, but actually, you know what? I can just take 10 minutes to jump on a call. And that's what I've done before. Again, with the number of people have been on the podcast, um, whether it's you called me, yeah. and they never call me, yeah. bam, answer. Yeah, I think that's it as well. In this day and age, I certainly don't call people. No. So if my phone rings and I see a name and it's somebody that I know come up, yep. I will always answer that phone. 100%. Because, yeah. 100%. And that's it. it's just that friend as well that you know never reaches out, that does reach out. Mm. Take that as a code word. Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to get better at supporting other people, just, just in general, it's something that you want to get better at, what skills do you need to kind of allow yourself to be empathetic and empowering to other people? Just learn more about yourself. The best thing you can do is learn about yourself because we're all the same. We're all exactly the same. So if you can start to figure out yourself, your habits, your behaviors, your emotions, your triggers, your responses, you figure yourself out, that self-awareness will allow you to then help other people. Because if you lack self-awareness, you're not going to be able to help other people because we're all fundamentally the same. So if you start to figure out how you respond, it's even more empower it's even more powerful, especially with my clients. And again, this is how I don't, um, even the, the, the episodes that we've done and I've done about myself and I share personal stories, I've got loads more stuff I don't share, which is not relevant. 
because there's nothing more powerful than when someone's struggling you can say oh i know exactly how you're feeling because i've been in a situation like this now i don't know exactly how you're feeling mm-hmm. but i very soon they're like oh my god so straight away whatever you then say next they're going to listen to you because like, this guy kind of gets it mm-hmm. this is why when everyone goes on a consultation call with me if they don't know my story i'll share my story back depression so straight away they're like this guy gets it this guy, oh yeah, I see him on Instagram, social media, and he's all this. Oh, actually, no, he's just like me. He has struggled. Mm. Straight away, the barriers go down. You're more likely to make an impact. But the only way that I can do that is by figuring myself out. So you figure yourself out first. It then allows you to then help some other people. Mm. Because if you can't listen to yourself, why is everyone going to listen to you? Mm. So my first thing is work on yourself. That, that'd be it. And again, you can do that through podcasts. There's loads of GS this podcast by you, the listener, actually listening to this. You clearly are, do you mean, someone that wants to get better, um, improving yourself. But again, there's books, there's other podcasts out there, there's educational videos that you can watch, like coaches that you can work with. Nothing better, I think, than working with a coach. One of the best things that I've done and has improved my life is working with coaches. But whether it's in the fitness space or the space I'm in now, having mentors is fantastic. Um, that'd be my, my, my advice just focus on yourself first if you do want to actually give advice and help people um, yeah lead by example because people don't care what you say they care what you do so if they can see that you've sorted your life out that's more powerful than you talking a good talk does that make sense what would you say yeah actions speak louder than words at the mm. end of the day mm. um, my final point is if you are struggling and, you, and you're at that point where you want to reach out who would you say would be like the best person to reach out to would be? Um, well, apart from like, if you don't want to reach out to the like helplines that are yeah. there. So like there's really good helplines and stuff. So again, reach out to them first if you're struggling that much. Uh, otherwise you want to speak to that friend and it might not necessarily be your best friend. This is a bizarre thing because we've all got that best friend that's your best friend, but you know that they're a bit of a gossip and you don't 100% trust them, but they're your best mate and they've been around your entire life. I wouldn't talk to them. I would talk to that friend that we've all got. And even if it's someone that you wouldn't necessarily say you're close to, but potentially have been close to in the past, that is extremely trustworthy. You you would you would trust them with your life. Because it's bizarre sometimes. Like there's some, some of those distant people, you trust you would trust them with your life. And maybe because you don't know them properly. But I would rather go to someone like that, that I trust. I would go to someone I 100% trust, rather than potentially my best friend that I don't necessarily trust. So if you're going, if you are genuinely struggling, you want to go to, and again, I'm talking about struggling, struggling here, not just you broke up with your boyfriend. If you're struggling, struggling, because you want to make sure you go to the right person. There's nothing worse than you struggling and you going to the wrong person, because mm-hmm. that make you feel worse. So you just want to look at the group of people that you know, and it could just be someone from your sports team yeah. that you know has struggled with their mental health. Mm-hmm. Go and reach out to them. It could be someone uh, again on Instagram that maybe a guest of mine that you've heard in this podcast reach out to them that there's relevance to you and your situation it may even be me do I mean if I can't help you I'm pointing in the right direction I have loads of school kids that message me after going to schools and sometimes I can help them if I can't I point them in the right direction so just asking yourself who's that person that I think I can really relate to and will get me and reach out to them and it may be your best friend hopefully it is your best friend it could be a family member it could be a partner hopefully it is your partner but if it's not any of those things just look in your life and just think who do I know that's kind of been a similar thing that could help they could reach out to because even if they can't help you more than likely they'll point them in the direction of someone that can yeah. and that might be even better just a stranger mm-hmm. just a stranger that actually knows what you're going through yeah what would you advise me i would just be always reach out mm-hmm. so i know you spoke about being like picking that right person but if it comes between not reaching out and reaching out just reach out just reach out and again there's free again there's this free there's free um, call things or even if you don't want to talk there's free text things you can do now where you're basically texting with a human being mm-hmm. but you're just talking and getting it out there so yeah reach out in some way shape or form like there's always something and somebody out there that will listen 100 percent. i've said it multiple times before like feel free to slide into my dms at the prime life project uh, i'll always reply back to you it's, again i used to have a virtual assistant i don't have one anymore so it is me that you are talking to i'll even voice note you back to prove that it's me so if you are struggling i'll happily listen and if i can't help you i'll point you in the right direction so yeah any other questions you got Nope, that's it for today. Awesome. Uh, Until next time, guys, take it easy.